There's a common problem a lot of people face when using their classic Newtonian reflector for prime master photography and a DSLR attached, and that's that they can't achieve focus. There's a simple reason for this, and I'll explain it. And there's also four methods that are commonly employed to correct for that. We'll go over the pros and cons of each one of those. So for those of you who don't understand how a Newtonian reflector works, let's briefly go over that. Light is received by a primary mirror, which is generally spherical or parabolic in shape, and then it reflects it back to a secondary mirror at 45 degrees, which pushes the light out the side of the telescope to the focuser. So if you decided to use your Newtonian reflector for astrophotography with a DSLR camera, you probably bought something like this, a T-adapter and a T-ring, a T-ring specific to the camera model you have, and a T-adapter with a barrel diameter that fits your telescope's focuser, usually 1.25 inch. So with the T-ring T-adapter attached to the camera and the camera mounted to the telescope, it probably looks like this. But let's say you try to focus on a star or a distant object and you can't achieve focus. Let me show you some diagrams and try to explain that and make it easy for you to understand. Examine this drawing and look where the focal plane rests. That's also where the eyepiece goes to allow the incoming light to make an image for you to view. And this diagram shows the side view of a DSLR camera with the T-adapter and T-ring attached. And notice how deep the sensor rests inside of the camera. Most Newtonian reflectors, especially the budget range, were designed with visual use in mind and not for astrophotography. As you can see, the eyepiece easily reaches the focal plane in this drawing. So in order to achieve sharp focus, the camera sensor has to reach the focal plane. But as you can see in this case, that's not possible because there's not enough inward focus to bring the camera sensor close enough to the focal plane of the telescope. So that brings us to method number one, the most common and the easiest of all four methods, and that's by employing a Barlow in your system. If you're not familiar with what a Barlow is, it's an optical device that effectively doubles your focal length. In some cases, they make them in times three, times four, and up. To explain why this works, imagine that you have a focal length of 1,000 millimeters. And by putting a two times Barlow in your telescope, you've increased your focal length to 2,000. So let's look at this drawing and look at the, where the old focal plane rests. The new focal plane is further up and out of the focuser and now the sensor from the camera can reach it. Using a Barlow is a simple and easy way to reach focus, but it also has a setback. And let's say that that 1000 millimeter telescope was an F8, and by using a Barlow, you've doubled the focal length to 2000. But by doing so, you've also doubled the focal ratio of the telescope. A higher focal ratio telescope has a more narrow field of view. And it's going to be a whole lot harder for you to track objects in the sky. It's going to put a lot more demand on your guiding system. That brings us to method two. In this photograph, you see a standard rack and pinion focuser that's common on a lot of the budget telescopes. And what you want to do is replace that with what's known as a low profile focuser. These are made specifically with astrophotography in mind and they allow enough inward focus to reach the uh, sensor to the focal plane. But you're going to need to know some measurements and probably have to drill new holes for mounting the new uh, spacer and that sort of thing. It can be a little uh, engineering feat and it's also costly in most cases. Generally these are around $200 and up. So if you spent that on your telescope, it's probably uh, not a very viable option. So that brings us to method number three and that's positioning the primary mirror forward in the telescope closer towards the secondary mirror. And by doing this, you're moving the focal plane up and away from the focuser so that it can reach the camera sensor. Much like the Barlow, but with no real increase in focal length. The advantage here is that you actually shorten the focal ratio of the telescope and achieve a wider field of view. 
So let's look at the back of a classic Newtonian telescope and this is a popular budget telescope, the Celestron Power Seeker 127. You notice there's six screws or bolts here. Three of these are for collimation and the other three are to uh, hold the primary mirror in place. Well, actually the cell that houses the mirror. In the next illustration you can see what the actual mirror and the cell look like inside of a telescope. And notice the mirror clips. If you have the proper hardware, you can use spacers and longer bolts or screws to push the primary mirror forward. But you have to be careful that you don't go too far forward or the secondary mirror may not be wide enough to receive all the light. Another problem that this may introduce is that you'll no longer be able to use the telescope for visual use without an extension. If you notice in this illustration, the eyepiece can't reach the focal plane because there's not enough back travel. That's a common problem with refractors and you just created it with a Newtonian. Fourth method is actually more of an alternative photography method and it's called eyepiece projection. If you look at this illustration, you'll see that there's a barrel, the eyepiece fits inside of it, and then a sort of adjustable extension that a T-ring can attach to that then attaches to your camera. And usually you can find these for $20 or thereabouts. And uh, you actually get greater magnification using this than you would just your standard prime astrophotography. So there's two downsides to using this method. One is obviously the camera sits real far away from the focuser and balance becomes an issue. And the second is that the greater magnification makes it harder to track objects, puts more demands on your tracking system. So I hope this video was informative. This is a problem a lot of people run into and it's one that I've faced myself and had to do quite a bit of research initially. I wish you the best of luck no matter which of the four main methods you try. Uh, especially moving the primary, that's a little more difficult than the other three. But good luck and um, I hope you have uh, plenty of clear skies. Thanks for watching.